Hey boys and girls, it's Night Stalker here. We're loading in today Harbour City Siege, but today we're going to do a breakdown battle again. So let me hit that pause key real quick. We're using, um, well, VLC player again. It's kind of funky. It's free. It's got a little road cone for a symbol. Plus, I don't have any more software for that kind of thing. So hopefully it's going to work okay. It did on my last one. So let's get a roll of this. Um, this is the second time I've done this because the first recording didn't work. Lovely. So here we go. Take two. Hopefully you don't mind me in the background going, ah, let's do it. So our picks today. I can see down here I've picked a cannon. The reason for that is part of my strategy today. Uh, using the Namcan archers in the first part of the battle will be to come up on the walls and pop in and out here like uh, Nemo's dad in and out of the anemone. We're going to use these two cannons here to destroy this, and this cannon here is going to be a backup. You know, we might even be able to destroy it twice if we're lucky. And when this siege tower comes in here, we're going to pop the archers up, shoot, 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 and duck back down when we see trebs. That's the plan. And our next pick, the uh, paladins or expedition knights, depending on which service you play on, they're, they're the same unit, they just have a different name. Um, they're really good at fighting around these little tight areas like this supply point here or this corner here you know, where the cavalry come down and things like that, or they even up here in this little zigzag area here where you tend to end up fighting sometimes. They're very good there because they're very tough and in a very confined area. So they're going to be a great pick for this map. The Imperial Arquebusiers, um, my plan with them uh, at the time, and, you know, when picking from this map, is to be able to shoot down this alleyway here from the supply point, come on up a little bit and shoot down here into... Uh, the, the final ally base. Now, of course, they are absolutely devastating, and that is a good little alley for them to shoot down because there is a little, what do you call it, a barricade sort of thing there to stop cavalry charging down there nice and easy. Uh, the only risk, of course, is the rear charge, which is quite common in this one because taking the supply point here means the death of the defending team more often than not, so there's a lot of effort made to both attack and defend it. Um, my last pick, my happy little watchman, uh, little, um, you know, there's 38 of them, so we need at least 38 body bags ready, but their purpose is to help defend this point here. Well, they could, you know, just be a spear unit, but we have my Talalori for a desperation unit. But they are a pike unit, and they also have a formation with a brace that will stun, so they're not completely, you know, a just a walkover for cavalry. Sure, They'll just, the cavalry will just storm them and kill them, but some will get stunned and some will actually take damage too. But the biggest thing is, is that particularly when they've got a skin on them, nobody can tell whether they're pike militia or, or village watchmen, because they both have a formation like that. Now, if you charge your cavalry into village watchmen, you're going to kill them. You might take a little bit of damage, but you're going to kill them, right? You charge into the into pike militia, yes, you will kill them. Yes, you will take a lot of damage in return. Pike militia aren't going to stop things like winged hussars. Don't you know? Don't get any dreams about that. But the important part is, is that the cavalry player will say, "Do I want to charge pikes?" Nine times out of ten, the answer is no. Particularly when you can't tell exactly what type of pikes they are. Excuse me. Will I just take a sip of my drink? I've been talking for forty minutes already. <laughs> I am an idiot. So that is the, the overall plan that I had when I picked these units for this particular map. Quite a fun map, Hardy Harbour City Siege. Um, I just uh, played with a subscriber uh, yesterday or the day before, and this is a map that we got a couple of times that we did particularly well in. So uh, Kate for Dead, hello out there. Nice to, uh, to talk to you. All right, let's hit that space bar and get loading into our game. So... I look down the weapons down the side there, you know, I like the cool weapons that go on the front line and do lots of nice damage, uh, things like maul, short sword, poleaxe, glaive, spear, those are really sort of the core units, and everything else tends to support what they're doing, or, you know, longbows will snipe off archers, and longswords can run around healing, but those those front line units are really sort of the core of your, of your team, if you like, and I can see that the enemy has got a great core as well, lots of short swords particularly. So we'll be spending a lot of time lying down. Now the great thing about uh, doing this format is that we can skip all of this nonsense and we just keep skipping forwards. Lovely load anim animation. My eyes are happy. 
Right, here we go. So we've got lots and lots and lots and lots of pointy sticks. I've hit uh, number two down here. So we're going to use the Nancans Bleed Attack. If you haven't got Nancans yourself and you don't know much about them, you're a new player, um, they're, a, they're a meta unit, so they're very strong, especially for their leadership of only 180. Um, and people take them for that Bleed Attack particularly because they mess up heroes and armoured units and things like that. So that's a little bit of a tip for you. And of course they've got a 32 man stack. There are, there are 32 units in the unit. Now, um, one thing I'm doing here that you want to probably practice yourself is don't get focused on the artillery. See that? Just just then. That would have taken my head off. Well, it would have hit me and done some damage. And while well, that's not a big deal for a longsword because I can just hit my R key and get all my health back immediately, it's quite inconvenient for other classes who have to stop and bandage. The other thing that it does when you're jumping off and on is well, ballistas can't get a good lock on you. You know, as we all know, or we should know, uh, ballistas are quite capable of one-shotting heroes, even green-level ballistas. So, the third reason is that we're much more aware. You can see I've just enlarged my mini-map there while I was playing. Um, I try to do that now anyway, just so, you know, when you are watching these videos, that it's much more obvious. We're just taking a sort of long shot at those Falconetti gunners, and while we don't hit them, we do scare them off, so that's handy. So on and off, on and off. We're avoiding ballistas, we're avoiding incoming shots, and we're keeping our awareness around us. If you stay on the, the, the gun and you point it at the siege tower and you click, 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 waiting for that reload, spamming the click, you're going to miss a lot of what's going on around you. For example, if you didn't see it already, go back and watch the last 20 or 30 seconds of the clip, and you will have seen an enemy hero who was most likely um, climbing a ladder or something like that. Let's just go back and have a look at that there again. That, the reason I didn't jump off the cannon was that one looked like it was going to miss. But it didn't. It must have been a bit of desync or something like that. Moving on. We took a cannonball to the face and everyone knows I like a good ball on the face. Well, you don't quote me on that. So we're in a bit of a limbo pattern now. We're just waiting for the enemy to do something. It's a melee hero and we're not willing to put down the cannon um, to take out that siege tower again because it's unlikely to get in with the, um, the siege cannon there. One thing, I don't know if we can see, if I go back, here we go. See these trees over here? There are enemy cannons behind those trees and they can hit these two cannons here, but it's very hard because they have to do the Z follow shot thing um, as they can't, you know, there's nothing, those trees move like they're blowing in the wind, the, the graphics and animation. So there's no set point where you can aim at and then shoot. So it's quite, a difficult task to have these cannons shoot these ones which is probably why the trees are there so they're not particularly a threat so I reckon this and this little culverin that he's got up here will happily kill that and once we've done it twice there's really no super advantage to doing it a third time usually it's the, this part of the map is done with by then so we've got some uh, pike militia coming up there oh you see that that poor bugger. Let's have a look one more time. That longbow, he should be moving left a bit, right a bit, left a bit, right a bit. This guy right here. When he shoots, he should hop right. And then shoot and hop right. And then shoot and hop left. And then shoot and hop right. And keep moving. Otherwise, this will happen. So if you're a, a, a bow player, a new bow player, don't let this be you. <laughs> so, you can see here, I saw um, the guys coming up the siege tower. You can rewind and watch that if you like. But... At this point, I've got a bunch of heroes and, and spearmen around, so I don't need to watch specifically here. My eyes, most of the time, uh, are flicking backwards and forwards between center screen, minimap, center screen, minimap, center screen, minimap. And that'll give you a good awareness of what's going on around you. So now that I've seen a unit and a couple of heroes pushing up, I'm moving my unit into here. Now note that they are in the wide formation, F1, down here, in the bottom left. Um, they're in the wide formation. The reason for that, if any trebs come in, or any cannonballs, anything like that, we take less casualties. And we're playing a dangerous game, this, make no mistake. If you're going to pop in and out with archers like this, you're playing a dangerous game. So we place them there, and we're in no hurry. We've got a very dangerous heroes up the front there. And there we go. We get firing into those, what are they? Spear sergeants or something like that. Then we just keep going. Chugga 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 chugga. Now, 
why is it do you think that I'm standing back here at the back and not involved in the front line fighting? Three, two, one, no answers. The reason is I'm looking for trebs, okay? Trebs and cannonballs. There are three cannons over here, one, two, three, all on the same plinth that a hero can pop between. He can fire one, fire one, fire one, and he can continuously, he or she, can continuously fire cannons at us without having to wait for reload. All they do is stop, move three steps to the left, pick a new cannon, and fire again. And that makes it very easy for them to lob cannon shells up onto here continuously. There's another set of three over here that face the side of the wall as well. And same deal, they're all in the same one of these little wooden platform things and you can just pop it backwards and forwards. So as soon as someone can land one cannonball accurately, they'll start to land them consistently accurately. And of course, trebuchets are always something you need to watch out for, uh, especially on top of the walls with arches, but generally any time you're, you're using arches. So let's see what happens here. Right, there's that cannonball we're talking about. Boom, killed two archers. And I'm thinking, do I stay? I haven't got any targets. So I don't want to get hit when that person fires their second cannonball. However, I didn't move fast enough. And we lose four or five archers. Life be like that sometimes. Now we're just going to stay down there a little bit. Oh, here's something interesting. You don't see this unit very often with these, um, these unusual hats. Uh, these are Black Dragon Archers. They're a premium unit, 100 leadership, I believe. They're an archer unit. Um, they're not particularly good, but they're okay for 100 leadership. Um, their special thing is that they do poison arrows, in, in the same way that, say, the incendiary or fire archers, or whatever you call them on your server, in the same way they do fire arrows, these guys do poison arrows, and they have poison ticks. Just in case you haven't seen those before, or you haven't, we haven't been sure of what they are. Right, so that cannon's changed target, and he's shooting up here at the village watchman. Now this is a good use of Village Watchman, 30 leadership. You can plonk him up here or anywhere that's slightly visible and you'll have people tempted to trebuchet them. Now that's what happens in a couple of seconds, you'll see, but that's a very good use of a 30 leadership troop, uh, wasting a trebuchet. I will often do that myself and that's why I give my Village Watchman and my Metalluri very fancy skins so that um, they have that option should that present itself. It sort of obscures what they are. Bit of an IQ play, you know, bit of a smart boy thing. Don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, right, so what do we got here? There's a lot of stuff about to happen. These guys are going to push up. Everyone's walking away to the A point, and we've got all these exposed archers. Um, I've just given them a heal. I'll do that quite often as a longsword. I'll try and use my heal ability as often as I possibly can. So, up they come. And of course, at this point, I'm a little worried about trebs again, because we've got a lot of stuff here that can get killed. So I'm standing back, ready for trebs, ready for trebs, ready for trebs. When something prompts me. I mean, like shooting them in the back is great fun. Right over here we all get a little more shot in the back and things like that. But see this, see this pole axe up on top? Here's what triggered me. We'll go back and have a look. You know, watch up here. What possible reason would a pole axe, a pole axe have to climb that ladder? Unless he's looking for a vantage point to use a trebuchet. So I'm edging towards here edging towards the stairs to go and put them down here the second I see anything come up here. But that doesn't actually happen, or rather it looks as though it gets dumped on the other side. Um, I wanted to talk about this, so we'll just skip back again. So you'll see here, ranged unit, ranged unit, ranged unit, ranged unit, ranged unit, ranged hero, ranged hero, a spear and a longsword. So what's going to happen is these pikes are going to come around here, and suddenly the, treb the trebuchets are no longer the biggest threat. I have to respond to this threat of pikemen attacking our squishy, delicious guys. So here we go. I'm going to use my Clash of Shields ult to come in here and knock everybody down. One of the things I'm trying to do here, other than keep the unit off our ranged units, is to CC, crowd control, or, you know, continuously control this, what do you call them, short sword. Um, long sword's not bad at it, actually. Um, the the alt knocks them down. Um, the third strike of my E ability knocks them down. Q uh, ability, uh, if you hit, get hit with that, it's minus 50% movement for 8 seconds, which is just forever in a melee. And, um, you know, the longsword is not great for, for doing a lot of damage to heroes. It doesn't have the damage output and the skills that do raw damage. But that doesn't stop you being useful. If you control the opponent, 
and hold on to them until your your assassin heroes like your spears or your dual blades or your glaives that can come up and do monster damage to them you just support your team right go for the assist and here we go we knock him down our heroes come along and jump up and down on his head and he is now turned into well short sword jelly can't buy that in the supermarket these days you know so we'll just continue popping arrows into the enemy units pushing up the siege tower we're not even on half ammunition yet so we're doing pretty well this is something I'm trying to do more of, is to, to look at the tactical map as often as possible. I don't think I do that enough. I would ideally like to double, double the amount of times that I look at that through a game. Possibly even more. You know, so you all the, the really top tier elite players in any game, they're constantly moving, they're constantly doing something. They're never just waiting or doing. So what am I doing here? I'm being my supporty self again. Let's just rewind it 10 seconds. Um, I can see here... This isn't a good combo to be up front against a poleaxe and a short bow. Both of these have stun abilities that are very good. So what ends up happening is the maul gets rough justice, like pinned, and the short, short bow can't support him. The long bow can't support him. So I'm in here trying to save him. I don't. But now what I can do is I can provide a base of fire or a secure base where those two spears know that they can't get grabbed or knocked down either because they've got me protecting them. And I will either ult them or do something else to any hero that decides to try and jump on them. So it was an unsuccessful move. We didn't save them all, but life goes on. That's what he gets to play more. And now we notice that the A point is being captured and a whole bunch of stuff is about to happen very quickly. So I move my archers up so that I'm going to go around this corner and I'm going to run to A. The reason I choose this spot here is this towery thing here, this house, that will actually block trebs. All right. You can blow up here, but you're not going to get more than, what, six or eight you know, on the outside, and I'll still have most of the unit left available. So this is a calculated risk. This will still be able to shoot here, and anyone comes in, but it can also shoot into the A point from here, which is where I'm running immediately to try and rescue. You cannot ignore points. Of course, there was one hero there, and he gets pushed straight off. So now I think, well, do I really want to move my Namcan archers back? Or do I want to keep them here for the push and have them shooting at point blank range? I choose point blank range. Now this is interesting. See what I've done here is we've got one, two, three, four, I think that might be five ranged units here. So I'm using my ult to knock down all of these stalwarts. Stalwarts of course are damn near impossible to shoot, especially from the front. And the reason for that is their giant shield. Now they can't use that shield while they're lying on the ground. So here I am. I know I've got massed amounts of firepower. You know, down here in the minimap, massed amounts of firepower pointed at these guys. So if I can knock them down even for three or four seconds, they're going to take monster damage in that time. However, I get to this point and I see this. A sword and shield unit coming in. Now if they charge, they'll kill me happily. So I need to cancel my, my alt with a couple of swipes of my sword and then I'm going to roll immediately backwards so I avoid their charge. Boom. And the serfs take the charge. However, at this point we are well prepared for them and there's so much range pointed at them that those serfs who are holding them off, right? Great job by those serfs and that serf player. He, he's done a great job blocking them while the ranged gets it stuck in. But he's only going to lose half a unit of serfs because there's so much range pointed at that those two units of men-at-arms and stalwarts that they just both get wiped in about 10 seconds flat for the cost of half a unit of serfs. Now, something's just happened. Let's go back. Here's another thing. Here is a poleaxe on top of here again. But is it the same poleaxe as this one? Which one is used as treb? We don't know. So I need to be aware. At the same time, mini-map down here, the siege tower comes in. And at the same time, have a look where my arrow is here on the minimap, there's a hero starts coming up there. A lot starts happening in a very sp short space of time. So I'm like, do I avoid the treb? Do I avoid the unit coming up the siege tower? Do I avoid the hero? What are my options here? I decide not to avoid them. I decide to place my archers smack bang in the middle and come what may. I decide that maybe I can take some casualties, but where I place them, they can shoot at things coming up the stairs, they can shoot at things coming up the siege tower, and they can shoot at things coming up the siege tower. So let's see what happens. 
We've got multiple directional options. Now happily the things coming up that siege tower are only surfs, so I'll adjust slightly because I'm not worried. The Kriegs rats will even kill them in melee combat. Now, see this here? I noticed that he disappears for a while. Watch down here in the minimap. So, I know that he's a dual blades because he's gone invisible. So I know that my unit is in no danger whatsoever because dual blades are not very good at all at taking on units. So I run over this way, kill some uh, peasants, and our archers manage to kill everything coming up there with the help of the two heroes. Treb comes in, now that I finally stopped watching for Trebs because I thought I had, had more pressing issues, and we lose another set of five or six. Now, I don't actually want them to move back to the, the point at, at this point, to the supply point minimap here. But I've used the press control and clicked on the supply point to have them moving down there. The reason for that is I don't need to control them now to take them with me down here. See on the minimap, down the stairs. That they're going where I want to anyway. I know these heroes here. I know these heroes over here. So I need to, to track down what's going to happen. And there's even heroes in the point. So they run down a nice block. I press V to start massacring the unit and I charge straight through and put the pressure on the spear so that he can no longer spend his time managing his unit. Now, we're suddenly out of ammo, and I decide I've got people coming from all directions. There's not much I can do about it. I'm just going to have to make it run for the supply point. It's going to cost, right? Especially these armager lances. Whoever I get stuck in here, and longswords are actually not too bad at smacking up um, horses. So there we go. We lost about half of what was left, no big deal, right? They're now back on the on the supply point and they can start shooting again. Oh, I watched that again. See how these monastics here are stunned? I used my momentum and their momentum to do enough damage to stun them. Watch this. Monastics, of course, are super, super tough, so we don't expect them to kill any here. Huge armor, huge hit point pull. But as a matter of fact, we do get an armor Jalatsa who falls down over there. So, now our archers are back on the point, they're all loaded up, and they're ready to go. So, not too bad a result to have eight left. Now, why am I going to continue to use eight archers? Well, as explained earlier in the video, this point here is not particularly great to hold. The, the, the things that tend to hold this point are like the remains of units that have come down off the walls, you know, half units and things that are, have survived the fighting, and they're not worth putting away and taking out a new one. Or if people take out units here, they tend to be lower value units, because it's very easy to overrun this point with large amounts of cavalry and things. So, we're going to have to see what we can do about that. Let's see what's um, trickling around. See the Kriegs rats have come off the walls here, that's the remainder of a unit there. Domain Spearman, very handy unit to have here at this point. Now we've got a, a part unit of Nancans from us. So, oh, just to say here, what I'm trying to do here is get, see this last little blue one here on the corner, this little blue mark? I want that little blue mark into this, this blue circle, because if even one of these units here um, is in that circle, it will resupply their ammunition constantly, so they have unlimited ammo. I know that most of you will know that, some people won't. We've got a unit of Spear Sergeants, which is an unusual pick, and... Spear Sergeants are quite often chosen by new players, and he's going to confirm my thought that he's a new player soon. See here, there's our Kriegs Rats who are now running off to a better better place to fight for Kriegs Rats, so they're not sticking around. We've got some probably Prefecture Archers here, they could be Vanguard Archers, so low value unit. Um, Iron Cap Swordsman here, another low, cap, low value unit. And these ones here have been pushed off the wall by the fighting too. Can you see the little Japanese swords on the side there? That tells me they're Imperial Arquebusiers. Hard to tell the gunners apart sometimes. Now, this is a key moment. Mr. Musket here, he's the owner of these uh, Domain Spearmen here. And he's decided he's going to save his Domain Spearmen for later, which is going to come to be a critical decision that will save us all. You'll see. And he's taken out his village watchman, because he knows that pikes are scary to cavalry players. So he might have low-tier units. He, might, he may be a new player, I don't know, but he's using low-tier units. But he's using them smart. Now if you don't have high tier units, you can play smart. You watch this guy. He's going to save us all. And he's going to do it with the main spearmen and village watchmen. Let's go. 
So here we are, back to the tactical map, keeping an eye out for what's going on. Now, over here, these spear sergeants have pushed out to try and engage a quarter of a unit of Imperial Spear Guard, so the big tower shield guys. He's pushed out further than anyone here can support him. Anywhere past about here at this point is completely unsupported. And he's going to pay the price for going out there unsupported. Let's see what happens. Oh look, he got cav, cav stomped. My archers aren't firing for some reason. Because we have unlimited arrows at this point, I will just fire any which way anyway. Now, our musket hero, he's lined up his pikes in a formation that is intimidating to cavalry. Can you take the risk for your 350 leadership cavalry unit? Probably not. So people don't tend to take that risk. Look at all the cavalry rolling in. Now you can see that all of the units that are still here are generally low value. Except our Kriegs rats here, who have just taken a monastic cavalry charge. <laughs> Good luck, Kriegs rats! Good luck, you can do it! <laughs> no, you can't. Okay, um, and neither can the Iron Cap Swordsman, it turns out. See these monastic knights? They're, they have a lance, and that lance outranges an Iron Cap's sh uh, shield bash or sword slash. So what's going to happen is they roll in. Iron Caps are not going to do any damage to them whatsoever. I've tried to save them a little bit by giving them a healing buff, so they're going to heal once they hit, but not many are going to survive after a heavy cavalry charge. There's actually some armager lances in behind them which are going to do a little bit better, you'll see. Or perhaps yeomen, whatever these are. So I'm going to trigger my ult, go and knock a few of them down, kill a few of them. And as you can see, there's not much left of the... <laughs> Be aware. What are we being aware of, sir? Hmm, yes, dirt is cold. Good luck with that. And rolling around here are serfs and things, and the village watchmen are quite tidily backing up the heroes. See how these guys are just getting stunned and things like that? The Iron Cap Swordsman uh, and the Spear Hero are finishing things off here. This guy needs to back out. Right, now a fateful thing happens. Watch the mini-map. See here? Those pikes just left. Their formation and that's going to open the back door now what a village watchman going to achieve over here he realizes his mistake but it's too late here is the herald of doom and as you can see we are currently wearing a new hat it's called i don't know flame something very hot hot new fashion and we're going to get i don't have an alt up to stop this happening so it is what it is. Our archers do do quite a bit of damage to them, but they were never going to survive, and the last of our eight uh, Nemcans died. Now, if you go back and watch between the four and after those Nemcans, they actually got about 14 kills between me and those Nemcans. Just eight of them. So that was worthwhile keeping them out. And here we go. So, as you can see, my watchmen are dressed in the scariest skin I've got to make them look as intimidating as possible, which is part of how I use them. Right. There's no way to tell with a uh, skin on whether they're pike militia or village watchmen. It's just impossible from any sort of distance. So we're going to use that to our advantage. Of course, cavalry coming in will wipe either unit, but uh, pike militia are much more likely to do severe damage to the um, cavalry than the village watchmen are. However, if you take two village watchmen units and you put them on top of each other, you now have about 12 pike points per lineal meter of pike line. And they become much, much more dangerous. Do you want to see Pike Militia destroy Prefecture Pikemen? Because you're gonna. Very soon. So here's some stalwarts. Now, a lot has been said about stalwarts and how tough they are and how meta they are and how too strong they are. And I think that is team war players, uh, territory war players, because... I don't see it in random matches. If I see stalwarts, I see damage pinatas. And the reason for that is that people don't use them in a supported manner. If you take your stalwarts into the set units or into a set play uh, or against multiple heroes, they're going to die. 
I don't care how tough they are. I don't care if they're elite or what. They're going to die. And we're going to use these ones here as damage pinatas too. So, here comes that Prefecture Pike Charge we talked about. Which, of course, fails utterly miserably on the double line of Village Watchman. And here's our damage pinatas for us. Mmm, tasty damage. Now, those of you who play a lot won't have been suckered in at this point. But you will realise quickly that if you're going, oh my goodness, damage pinatas, so delicious, so delicious, what have you missed? What have you missed in this picture? We're being flanked on two sides. Okay, see the mini-map? So at this point, I know that the gig's up, right? I'm going to try and dump my skills into these guys, kill a couple more, and then I'm going to have to bug out. Village Watchman or no Village Watchman? Here we go, we we'll dump the last of our skills into them. Mm-mm, tasty damage now. Up to 3,000 damage each. Right, so, hang on, let's have a look here. Can you see these paladins getting stunned by the village watchman? It's quite quite amusing. See the little stuns on them? But it's over now. We need to escape, and we need to escape right now. Now, when you're trying to escape from something like this, ow, um, get on your horse, for goodness sake. You can't be poleaxed alt altered, you can't be dual blades altered, and your horse will take some of the damage that's directed at you. And as you can see, only two out of four of the heroes that were fighting there got away. Everyone else left it too late. Now, um, this is interesting. We're having a bit of a joust with longsword and shortsword. Uh, both shortsword and longsword are terrible from horses. They can't fight from horseback at all. It's awful. But I'm not here to pause it on him. I'm here to pause it on what's just around the corner. All right. As you can see, and will come as no surprise, because, well, we saw it on the map earlier that this was about to happen, um, we've got people attacking our supply. Now, if we had a unit with us, this path here on the minimap, along here, and charge them in the back would be ideal. Or here, and charge them in the flank would also be ideal. But we don't have a unit with us. To do that, on less than half health, would be a death sentence. We'd get a couple of hits in and get wiped. Okay? So, that doesn't mean it's a complete write-off. Um, we're going to have a quick check down the alleyway to see if there's anything we can do. Um, of course, this is, you know, I know everything, <laughs> having watched back the video. But um, here's what we're going to do, right? We're going to have a look in, see what's going on here. And it's a big nope. And we're going to run away and join our side of the fight. You'll see that the, um, the spear hero is chasing us, and that's going to be the death of him. Because we've joined our, our friendly units here, and we're relatively safe now. Right, and of course that spear hero is now dead. Good for him. But, the big but, is not only we're capturing here, we're being captured. And that's a big problem, because we've got slow units here, part units here, we've got peasants for goodness sake, and a lot of our heroes are particularly damaged, and more than half of our team are sitting here. So that's not good. So, in a split second decision, I decided to bring in the Imperial Gunners, because we've got a whole bunch of pikes and things already. So we're going to bring, oh, and of course the cavalry spawns, that was very, very helpful as well. So we should be able to, if they can hold the point just for a few seconds longer, we should be able to do some serious, serious damage. All of our team are coming with the big, big artillery. So here we go, massacre time. Ready, aim, volley, fire. Absolutely devastating. Now we're going to use our ult here to make these paladins lie down so they can't use their shields and will become victims very quickly. Then we're going to commit murder in about eight different ways over here. Uh, one of those being of course catching flaming fireballs with our teeth. Now not everyone can do that, you know, so I expect some recognition for such an event. <laughs> that Maul grabbed that short sword and carried him away to his den. Alrighty, so when I was doing this, I was very conscious that they were going to attack us in the back. It was almost obvious that this is going to happen, right? You can see the short bow shooting down the alleyway to the right there, and you can see him on the minimap. But also it makes perfect sense in these big scrimmages on, on the, the end point like this to take a fast unit and go around the back. And that's exactly what's happened. Now, if you saw before, when I was healing, I could see that we've got a condo unit here, and we've got an Iron Reaper unit here. So I figured that... These gunners and namcans are actually perfectly safe. We've, it's obvious that they're going to be there. Two different players have pinged that they're there. 
I made a wrong assumption. These are random games, right? There are different ability levels within these games, and you know that hero could be dead for both of those guys. I didn't know that. I took a bit of a gamble. Um, you know, I didn't want to move them this way because they'd get killed by that short bow and whatever he's got there, and I certainly can't move them up here. They'll be dead very quickly. So what can you do? Rock in a hard place, right? So I chose to stay there and take no action, which unfortunately was the wrong decision because the condos weren't fast enough, the iron reapers weren't fast enough, and so we went and knocked them down, volley fired them at point blank range, and at least we wiped the unit. You know, it cost us two thirds of the unit of gunners and probably the NAM cans off the same. Now, ordinarily I would continue to use seven Archibuzios, especially Imperial Archibuzios, because they're very good units and they can still do a lot of damage. Um, but we're in the last minute 20 of the game and we need something big and something tough to go and stand on that point. So hold the line. So we're double tapping C, we're getting them to run to us as quickly as possible. And we're getting on with it. Now, Here's one of those things I was telling you before. Here's our Mr. Musket. And here are his domain spearmen. Now Mr. Musket might not, is obviously not the highest level player, and he obviously doesn't have the highest level units. But if it wasn't for Mr. Musket, our entire team would have lost by now. So don't be discouraged. If all you've got is village watchmen, and all you've got is domain spearmen, as you can see, Mr. Musket here, he's making a great go of it. He is very, very effective, especially given the the level of units he's using. He's doing a fantastic job. He's doing exactly what he should be doing. Let's see what happens here. Now, of course, those domains for are not going to last super long, but they held on long enough to help to arrive, and that's what's key. Now, this is something that is a bugbear for me, and I think it's a bugbear for many players too. Here's the situation in this game. There is 50 seconds left. 50 seconds left in this match. All that has to happen is that tiny sliver of, of capture of that final point. Uh, all they have to do is stand on it for five seconds. One hero for five seconds from the enemy will win them the game. And if you look down at your mini-map, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six heroes that are standing around, not on the point. Why? We've got this unit up here, we've got this unit here, we've got this unit here. Why are they not moving on to the point? At this stage of the game, nothing else matters other than preventing the capture of this point. You could lose every unit, you can lose every hero, as long as there is one single thing still standing on that point. Get on the point. I cannot express it enough. In this sort of scenario, get on the the point. I don't care if you're a longbow with 10 hit points left and all you've got is falcon any gunners. Get on the point. It drives me crazy. And the same with the enemy. Look at this, it's even worse. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think there's another one hiding in there. 10. Plus a whole bunch of units. They have 10 heroes. They outnumber us nearly 2 to 1. Why are they not on the point? You know? Why are there spears over there? Why, you know, it doesn't matter that you're a short bow. Get on the point. <laughs> have I made myself clear? All they have to do is have one hero on that point unobstructed for 10 seconds and they, uh, five seconds even, and they win. And they're not doing it. Now, back to the action. Now, I've had my little, my, got it off my chest. So thanks for listening, guys. You're a lot cheaper than therapy, I have to say. So let's see what happens now. Get on the point. So here we go. Our paladins are now on the point. They've taken the pressure off the domain spearmen. There's two of them left. And thankfully, we're here now. I'm not going to try and kill anything with these paladins. I'm not interested in kills. I'm not interested in score. I am on the point. So the major thing I have to do here is survive. It doesn't matter what else happens. Survive. Now, Paladins make a surprisingly good, if not small, shield wall. So I'm going to use that strength. If you see down the bottom left, Paladins can heal, which I'm going to make use of. And this number three here, it's, it's iron sides. It's the same as the short swords, uh, the short sword hero's ability, where they, for 10 seconds or so, get 150 boost to all, of, all three of their defensive stats. It's a purple doctrine, so I imagine it's only available on 
booming frontier. It's not available in EU, NA, anything like that. Uh, sorry. But we've got it, so we're going to use it. All right? We're not going to charge in. We're not going to try. We could smash that unit of javelins down and kill all of them. That's not why we're here. We need to save the point. 46 seconds. We'll take a blister hit. So we're going to try and move out of that blister's arc and also try and move out of the, um, the arc of the trebuchets. We're still within splash range here, so we could still take some damage for a treb. But, as you can see, they can't hit us directly. So, I've done the charge so that when the Paladins that got knocked down, see the ones over here got knocked down, it means when they get up, they'll, they'll rush as quickly as possible onto here. Also, I was trying to stun some of the heroes. Right now, we've got a Spear Sergeants who have come to rescue us, and that is going to be securing the game. It doesn't matter what happens to the Paladins now. Just everybody and everything should get on the point. And look at that. They had stalwarts standing back and looking at us for about the last 45 seconds to a minute. It was insane. Get on the point. Get the point? <laughs> I hope you get the point. Dual blades is too little, too late. And it's a victory. Well deserved, if I do say. Um, we do get a vault. Um, I've got it. <laughs> when I was recording this, I was very excited to have such an exciting game. Um, of course, I was talking over this as well. I record the audio separately, so I've done away with that audio and created this one for the second time today, I might add. So we did 1.3 million damage and 1.1 million damage taken. Uh, whoops. 133 kills. We got 99 participation, which is great on defense because you can't push any siege engines or anything. So it, it is a measure of how often you've been defending the points. All right. At the units, I'll pause it there too. Nam Kanach has had a great game. 64 uh, murders. Imperial Arcabouziers, in the very short time we had them out, they killed 28 units. And most of those were quite serious, good, hard units too. You know, they were paladins and all sorts of stuff. Um, the Expedition Knights, well, they died for a good cause, right? We didn't go in there looking for, to, to crush enemy units or to kill heroes. We went in there looking to survive. And we did that successfully. Village Watchmen. Now, if you remember, the Village Watchmen were fighting Prefecture Pikes. They were fighting... Um, paladins and they were fighting stalwarts and somehow they came out with five kills so good on the village watchman and we of course used those um, uh, stalwarts as damage pinatas for as long as we could moving on so um, when I was yeah I was excited about that I got zero zero nine right no kills but also no deaths and came second in our team <laughs> which just goes to show that we were playing the team game pretty hard right and right, we'll just pause it here because I want to talk about this. Look at those damage pinata numbers. We did a total of 360,000 damage with a longsword. All right, that's a monster number with a longsword. And I can't can't even explain that. Look how much damage our hero took. We took so every hero has 20,000 um, damage, you know, health roughly. So we took what, 14 heroes worth of damage? <laughs> so we, we could have died 14 times over, and we didn't die once. So that just goes to show how tough a longsword with a deep hit point pull can be. And overall, the damage numbers were very good. Let's hit play again. You should hear the original soundtrack for this. I was very excited because it was such a fun finish. And here is where I was explaining everything that went wrong. So we'll pause that here and we'll do it ourselves again. So the Namkans came in and out, in and out, in and out. That was fantastic. They did a great job. You know, even the, the desperation run back to the point went really well. We, we Half of what was left survived, so it was great. Um, this little puddle here, this steaming puddle of goo, uh, is the village watchman who died for a great cause and really did quite well for a 30 leadership unit. Uh, I do recommend them, you know, have a go with them. They're actually pretty cool. And, you know, the strategies of IQing, making IQ players where people think that they are proper pikes is also often fun. Um, up here was our Imperial Arcabuzios dying, getting slashed in the back. Um, bit of an error. I relied on our friends, and you just can't rely on people so much in a, in a game like this, in a random game. You just can't. And, of course, our Paladins died for a good cause on the end point. I'm not sad about that at all. They did what they could. 
you know, I kept them off out of the fight as long as I could to have them taking as little damage as possible to try and see out the balance of the battle, and they did. Um, surprisingly, um, the enemy killed a third more heroes than us and still lost. Uh, they had a couple of hundred units left between them. We had uh, 400. Oh, no, I'm, I'm misreading that. Four, 400 between them. Um, so really it was relatively balanced. A lot of, well, apart from the hero kills, I'm surprised they got so many hero kills and still didn't win. But I guess that's because we're so awesome, of course. Yes, flex, flex. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope you've learned something new today. Um, we did break that down, and it is a really long video now. Getting on to like an hour, uh, well, three quarters of an hour. So I really do hope that you learned something today for all the time you've invested in getting to this point of the video. If not, well, hey, I really hope you enjoyed listening to the game. Thanks for coming to the channel. Hey guys, Knight here. Thanks for watching my videos. I make these in my spare time for a bit of fun, so hopefully you learned something or you just enjoyed watching. It would really help me out if you would subscribe and like my videos. See you on the battlefield.